discussion of the devastation of civil society. Right. The sanctions had a particularly damaging effect on the networks, both the institutions of government and the social networks. That were yes, I, I think the Iraqi case teaches a lot about teaches us a lot about sanctions. We should, we should rethink sanctions as a weapon. Uh, which obviously is a very cheap weapon in the international community, but it turns out to be, in the case of Iraq, a very particular case of Iraq, turns out to be absolutely devastating uh, to civil society and the kind of networks, the middle class, that is so essential to the transformation of the country in the democratic direction after the dictatorship is overthrown. That's the part of it that we never, uh, we, 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 we were not able to judge before. Now, they, we, uh, it was becoming absolutely clear for many, many years before 2003 that sanctions were not working, yeah. that Saddam was actually benefiting from it, that while his power overall was being weakened in the sense of the number of planes, tanks that he could throw at other countries, out of Kuwait in 1990 or Iran in 1980, in that sense he was being weakened. But his power vis-a-vis -vis his own population, which was being pauperized, was being restricted. Right. Because you can, the whole point of tyrannies is that you can distribute the pain unequally. And you can protect and shield your police and your regime from and the effect of sanctions. And the intimidation. But the also, the other consequence is that this is truly um, kind of new, is that institutions take, for instance, education, health, and we're not talking about the military now or security, um, were constantly being, uh, what's the word, uh, 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 kind of cut back by the regime, really, what's the word for it, scavenged. Uh, right. They were being pilfered and, pilfered and stripped clean. Uh, salaries were being cut down, so the doctors you know, working, uh, the pharmacists, etc., working through the Ministry of Health or the teachers, working through the Ministry of Education had salaries that were not up to the levels of inflation that were raging in the country, could not afford basic foods. So the resort, it, there was a, re, a kind of enormous growth of corruption right. inside those institutions, which were not, because precisely because they were totalitarian institutions, were not corrupt before. They were right. totalitarian, they were repressive, and they worked. There was a police state, there was an efficient police state. Mm -hmm. That is not the same as a corrupt criminal state, which functions through illegal activity, black market activity, and so on and so forth. Right. So um, the net effect was, you know, you had scenes of, you know, professors, faculty, and so on selling all their books on the streets of Baghdad and basically being pauperized and destroyed. And the doctors uh, um, uh, forced to work two or three jobs a day and so on and so forth. Teachers selling questions to students in order to make a second salary and so on. So th Other over time, demoralization. Uh, over time, that shredded right. the very class that one needs to it's move on. Through. And and you know people never cannot build anew when they are in a state of despair. We all know that they have to actually be getting better or so economically or in some way to be able to even see the opportunities that exist in participating in the process of change. So when you have a middle class, a professional class that's beat and cowed and devastated, uh, unable to even force to sell its books, force to sell its skills in all sorts of ways, that is not the perfect, the right social material to rebuild the country. And you mentioned that's the point your, I was trying to make. Yes, and you mentioned in your comments you're just beginning to see a bit of reweaving of this fabric in the bloggers who are. Well, it's it, what this is a new phenomenon that's coming up post 2003, which is younger people, much much younger people, uh, say in the 20s, early 30s, and so on, who um, who are using the internet to develop a whole new voice, a whole new way of writing that wasn't there before. This is genuinely new and very exciting. Very exciting.